Effects of Different Protolytic Enzymes on Gelatin by Veronica Armstrong and I'm from Jamestown High School. Different proteins called collagenases are found in common fruits. Collagenases all break down the protein called collagen. The research problem is to see which collagenase is most aggressive on the gelatin as a model for how the enzyme acts on actual collagen. This could be helpful to see the rate at which each protease degrades collagen to see if one may degrade too slow or too fast to be incorporated in a treatment. This research could be beneficial for developing treatments for collagen-related illnesses such as cancer, digestion issues, and autoimmune diseases to help treat the place of the growing disease. The research question for my project is, is one collagenase more aggressive than another? My hypothesis, my hypothesis was if the fruit that degrades the gelatin the most in the recorded time is the, collagenase, is the collagenase that is the most aggressive. The independent variable is the enzyme slash fruit and the dependent variable is the amount of gelatin degraded. My expected outcomes was that the bromelain would be the most aggressive collagenase when I researched this problem, I found the most information on bromelain and the most research about this collagenase. This is based on the rationale by measuring the amount degraded in a certain time to measure which is the most aggressive. This will help me find which collagenase degrades the most and the least collagen. For this experimental procedure, first I laid out all of the needed materials for this experiment. Then, I took one small pot and brought one cup of water to a boil. While the water was heating up, I put one 800 milliliter beaker in a sink. Once the water was at a boil, I carefully, with oven mitts and protective gear on, brought the boiling pot of water over to the sink to pour carefully into the 800 milliliter glass beaker. After that, I added the jello solute to, war to the warm water in the beaker. Then I stirred that mixture for two minutes. After two minutes, I added one cup of cold water to the mixture and stirred for a little bit longer. I repeated this part of the procedure twice to get three different 800 milliliter glass beakers of gelatin. Once I had all three gelatin mixtures made, I placed all three glass mixtures into the fridge for two hours. After they were done cooling, I took them all out and prepared the fruit to be placed on top of the gelatin. I cut the fig, kiwi, and pineapple into flat pieces so that they would be placed flatly on top of the gelatin. I waited and timed four hours three different times for a total of a 12-hour difference to measure how far the fruit sank down into the gelatin and measured how much gelatin was degraded. The two big risks in this experiment was boiling water and using sharp objects to cut up the fruit. When boiling the water, I made sure to use protective skin and eyewear to avoid hot water splashing onto my skin or in my eyes. When moving and pouring the hot water, I made sure to pour the hot water in a place where it could easily splash out and not get anywhere on me or anywhere in my area. And I made sure to move carefully with two hands and having an adult supervision. When using the sharp cutware to cut up the fruit, I made sure to use two hands to carefully and slowly cut, making sure not to be messy or to be careless. I also had adult supervision for this part as well. My results were very surprising to me as I expected bromelain to be the most aggressive enzyme. However, actinidin was most aggressive and degraded the most gelatin in two of the three trials, making actinidin the most aggressive enzyme. Each trial was very similar by just taking a picture each four hours to observe how much the fruit placement has changed. It was constant that the fig barely moved and it actually moved the same amount every trial. The amount of fruit went down in the gelatin is the amount listed under the fruits in the data tables. At the very end of the experiment, the degraded gelatin was very obvious in the liquidated gelatin at the top of the beaker. 
When I poured it out to dispose of the first trial, I could tell how one could pour out more easily than the other because it was more liquefied. I measured this as well at the end of every experiment to see how much gelatin was degraded in the liquid form. These results tell me that the actininin enzyme, which was in the kiwi, works the most and the quickest, and the bromelain enzyme, which was present in the pineapple, works around at the same pace but just a tad bit slower. The results of the fig make me question if the figs I used weren't good for this experiment because it was surprising how little they degraded compared to the bromelain and the actinidin. These results tell us actinidin that works the most the quickest, meaning if a treatment needs to degrade a great amount of collagen quickly, they could look into the actinidin enzyme. I expected the bromelain to be the most aggressive enzyme because it was in the most treatments and most researched about. These results could mean to me that bromelain degrades at just the right pace, but not the quickest and the most. In all experiments, the fig results remain constant, while the kiwi and pineapple fluctuated. There was even one trial where the, where the pineapple degraded more than the kiwi. Results were affected when two cups were measured out for every experiment, yet the starting amount of milliliters was constantly different. In conclusion, I could tell from this experiment that the bromelain and the actinidin enzyme degrade at a very similar rate, but the actinidin enzyme degrades the most the quickly. These results address my research question by giving me proof that one enzyme is more aggressive than the other by, de degrading quickly, by degrading quicklier and more. These results support my hypothesis because the enzyme that was the most aggressive degraded the most and the quickest. For my work in the future, I see myself fixing the jello measurements and measuring strategies to have better accuracy and look further into research about the actinidin enzyme as I didn't find too much about it in my first researches. These were the different websites I used for my research and even one YouTube video to reference for measurements and how they conducted the experiment themselves. I would like to acknowledge my adult supervision that was helpful when I needed assistance and for helping me with safety measures.